Look at it so very easy. My name is Laura and it's a lot of fun to make magic pillows or burrito pillows because they're quick, they're easy and they have beautiful finish outside as well as inside. You can do them with French seams or just have a plain seam inside. What's really fun is making them with border prints. And children border prints are a lot of fun to sew with. They're big, bold, fun patterns and fun colors. And there's so many different ones out. Now these are all from a company called Susie B's Fabrics. And she's an artist who designs all of these little characters. You can get regular fabric. She also has great border prints. And they're a lot of fun to sew with. So today I'm going to turn this border print into a pillowcase. And this is Paul and Sheldon. They have beautiful coordinates to go with them. A border print is going to be a long border. Sometimes it'll be on one side and sometimes it'll be on both sides. But what it does is it runs along that salvage, that part there where all the words are at. How much fabric you're going to need is going to decide on how big you want your pillow. The pillow width is going to be whatever the fabric width is. And most of the cotton fabrics are about 45 inches and then once you trim off that extra, you're at about 42, 43 inches. A standard pillowcase is about 32 inches. A queen size is a little bit bigger at 36 inches and a king size is anywhere between 40 and 42 inches. So it's just the length we're going to want. I'm going to need a cuff and a little accent piece. Now the cuff can be cut anywhere between nine inches or 10 inches. For this, I'm going to do a nine inch cuff. This little decorative piece can be cut anywhere between two inches and two and a half inches and I'm gonna cut it at two inches. If you cut this little piece at two inches, you're just going to have a smaller cuff versus a two and a half inches. This was cut at nine and this is at 10. So whatever this cuff size is going to make that pillow a little bit bigger. This cuff is folded in half, so it's gonna give you an additional five inches. So I have my length at 27 inches. I have the cuff cut at nine inches and that little decorative piece at two inches and they're all cut the width of the fabric. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the iron and press this two inch strip in half. I'm going to make sure that all of the folds and the wrinkles are pressed out so it's nice flat fabric and then this will be folded. Normally we cut off the selvage but we're going to cut the selvages off after. We're going to stack these layers together before we do any sewing at all. So the first layer we're going to put down is that cuff. And the cuff, the fabric is right side up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this border print and we're going to match it along the cut edge of that cuff. And we can start at one side and just match that up all the way along to the other side. Smooth out any wrinkles. It'll be easier to do it if it's smoothed out. The next is going to be this little decorative cuff. Now, if you don't have this decorative piece, you can do this without. So I have the wrong sides touching and I'm gonna take that cut edge and I'm also going to match it up along the edge all the way along. I have the border fabric, the body of the pillow and that little decorative cuff all running along that edge. The next thing we're going to do is roll the bottom up all the way so it fits inside this area. This is why they call it the burrito wrap. You can roll it or fold it. We just need to get it to fit inside this cuff. We don't want to have it too close to this border because we don't want to stitch it in. Now we're going to take that bottom cuff and we're going to wrap it around to this edge. So what we've done is we've burritoed everything or stuck everything inside. So now we have that cuff. It's covering everything. I need to pin all five layers of this fabric together. 
making sure all of those edges are matched up. If you find your fabric is shifting, you can pin or put clips along those areas and then roll this up and then roll that back to that corner. From here, I'm going to be able to pin in between my clips. So my clips are just kind of holding it there for me. I like to work from the center going out. Once I hit that next clip, I can remove it and continue pinning. All of those layers are together, so you've made this little roll. So everything is in that little tube all the way along. We need to stitch along the raw edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. Once we have that seam stitched, we're going to pull the insides out of that tube. And just grab that little roll, pull the two apart, and it's going to work its way through. When that end comes out, we're going to have that finished cuff. Once we've turned it right side out, we need to press this cuff. We have both sides that are going to have a nice finished seam. This little decorative piece is going to face the body of the pillow. And to press it, we're going to do a back pressing first and only with a light press. So we're going to use our hands and the iron and just press that seam coming up. But we don't need to press this top. We're only going to press this area here. Just bring that iron and press it up to the top. Then we're going to be able to turn it over and we're going to take our hands and pull that seam so it's nice and tight along that edge. Then we're going to be able to take that iron and have it help us by moving that up to the top. And there you can press the whole thing going right up to that edge. What we have now is that nice big cuff along the top, the selvages along the edge. We need to trim off these selvages and turn this into a pillow. If you are not going to do a French seam, you are going to be able to just fold this pillow in half so the cuff edges meet and that bottom edge meet. You're going to be able to trim all of that selvage off and by trimming it this way you know it's all going to be the same. So then you can do a stitch and stitch this together and do a finishing edge like a serge or a zigzag. A French seam is done a little bit differently. A French seam is two seams together so that the edge of the fabric is tucked inside the seam allowance. So the first thing we need to do is sew the pillowcase together so that the wrong sides are touching. Match up your cuff edge and match up that bottom cut edge. Okay, now we're going to be able to cut off this salvage. Match up that top seam and pin all the way down so we're going to pin the two raw edges. We need to stitch this together with a very skinny seam allowance, a quarter inch and smaller. When you start up at the top, do a little bit of a back stitch and stitch all the way down, pivot in the corner, go over to the end and do a back stitch here. We now have that small seam done. The two end corners are going to be trimmed and that's going to help solve some of the bulk. That little end is just going to be snipped off and it doesn't have to be too close to that seam. Then we're going to go to the other edge and this is the edge with the fold. We're also going to just trim off a little piece and trimming that little piece off again is just going to solve the bulk. We need to turn this pillow right side out. Before you do, make sure you have no long threads hanging out because that way we don't have to trim them off after. I do like to use a point turner to get in those corners and push them out so they have nice sharp points. And we need to go to the iron and press it once again. We want that seam as tight as we can right up to this edge. And we're going to do that on those two long edges. We're going to do another row of stitching and then pivot at that corner and come down. And that row of stitching must cover what is hiding inside. So you can do a generous quarter inch 
or even a little bit bigger. You don't want to have any of that seam allowance poking out when you do the next seam. Back stitch at the corner, go down, pivot right to this corner, and then back stitch. With that last seam done, when we go to turn the pillow right side out, that is going to have a nice finished seam on the outside, and that inside still has the nice seam. So turn that pillow right side out, poke in those ends so they're nice and square, give that pillow a nice press. You might find that you have the little straggler thread sticking out from that seam. You're going to be able to just trim off those threads, but most of them should be all tucked inside. With that final pressing, Paul and Sheldon are ready for the pillow. This pillow now equals about 30 and a half inches by 20 and a half inches. So depending on the seam allowance you do, your pillowcase is going to be different in size. This particular one, the fabric started off at 32 inches. I used a 10 inch cuff, so it does end up being a lot bigger. There are so many different combinations that you can make with those cuffs and that little band. Making these magic pillows or these burrito pillows with border prints are so much fun. I'll put a link in the description to the artist who designs all of these little characters. She's painting a mural on a hospital wall and it's adorable. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.